Whoa, Helen Thomas, fast on the trail of President Clinton. Welcome, folks. It's day 106 of the Raw Deal, the Rush Limbaugh program back on the air. Here is the President of the United States now finding himself in continued trouble with the economy. What is this picture? I don't even, I don't even worry about what this, this crew finds. Here, ladies and gentlemen, George Stephanopoulos. Now, why are we doing this? Dick. Oh, come on. Come on. See, last night we had videotape of Mr. Stephanopoulos saying, in answer to a question about whether or not I have any national influence, Mr. Stephanopoulos said, oh, I don't think Rush likes me. I said, no, it's nothing personal. We just disagree with your politics. So I come out here tonight and I see this as our picture for Stephanopoulos. Well, I'll tell you what this is to do with. They've got to have a disciplinarian, folks, in the White House. Clinton has admitted that his staff has lost its focus, and it's because it's a little young. The staff's young. We suggested last night maybe they open a daycare center for the staff <laughs> in the uh, White House, and that perhaps uh, if they need nannies, babysitters, or whatever, that they could call Zoe Baird for some ideas on Apple. <laughs> We have a set, we're going to do a subject tonight. We're going to do a whole segment tonight devoted to the national debt versus the deficit. So many people don't know the difference between the two. They, our crew went out, shot some footage. We call it Man on the Street. I am, I am just amazed at some of the answers we got, and you'll see them tonight. And our fourth segment here, folks, you will see if we get to this. Dick, make me get to this. Employ a little discipline tonight because in this, the fourth monitor, we're going to show you the real truth about feminism. We've got an anti-smoking ad that they're wearing in Minneapolis or Minnesota. Well, I mean, it is just, it just it says it better than anything I could ever say, which is saying something. <laughs> okay, let's show you the newspapers from today. Go ahead and put them up, Chet. We've got a montage of uh, newspaper stories. President of the United States uh, sent uh, Mr. Stephanopoulos out last night to the press room and... Uh, basically said that the president uh, wanted the joke he told about me to be funny but realized that it wasn't. The press and everybody has assumed that this is an apology. If that's their apology, then I accept it. I want to I put this thing behind me. I was asked this afternoon, Rush, you got a lot of mileage out of this. Why are you going to let it drop? And uh, I, my answer to that question is exactly what I'll tell you now. This thing has a normal lifespan of its own, which I think is probably... Uh, past now and to try to keep this thing artificially alive would would be to be disingenuous myself about it and I don't wish to be I was minding my own business Saturday night in a Washington DC hotel room and had a couple jokes told about me and so now the reaction has had uh, its time to take place and my response to it so I consider it over and done with and I do want to reiterate again that that my disagreements with this administration are purely political and ideological they are not personal in any way, shape, matter, form, and never have been. Now, this next piece I want to show you, I don't have to show you this, and I, I didn't want to. But in our production meeting prior to tonight's excursion into televised excellence, otherwise known as this show, um, uh, they said, oh, you got to show it, Rush, because it shows you being a real guy. My friends, I, uh, I'm going to apologize for this before you see it. I ran into Eleanor Clift Saturday night in Washington, D.C. Our, no, wait, no, wait, no, wait. Our man in Washington was interviewing people as they left the ballroom at the White House Correspondents Association, and I ran up to her, and she was just as nice as she could be. And, you know, folks, they say I'm a rotten guy, and I'm really not a rotten guy. I want to show you as mean as I ever get. And I, I really, I, I, I want to apologize. I just, I just, some, I couldn't help myself. I just, I do this sometimes. It's against my better judgment. And I, I just, I, but I don't want you to see it. I really don't want to show it. But they're making me. Mr. Ailes said, "Oh, show it to him." I said, "Yeah, it's me in the picture, not you." So here, take a look at it, and I think you'll understand. Here we go. Hey, I'm there. I thought this was Mike Wallace's shtick. Oh, no, 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 no. I just want to, want to say hello. It's nice to finally meet you in person. Nice to meet really? you as well. Yeah. Tell him the truth. We're an honest he's, he's a lot nicer away from the cameras. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I now, don't I? It was... You know, it's just one of those childish things you can't stop doing. I, nothing, I'm just sorry about it. I, I uh, you want to see it again? Can we, you want to, roll it back. Roll, I, 
have him, have him roll it back. Roll it back. You got to look at. You may have missed it. I, and I and I want you to know what I'm apologizing. This is this is boldness, folks. Many people would try. Can we can we roll it back? Or are we the press? Yeah. What was that out there? Of course. Yeah, here we go. Oh, <laughs> you said I'm, I I no. thought I thought this was Mike Wallace's shtick. Oh no 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 no! I just want to, want to say hello. It's nice to finally meet you in person. Nice to meet really? you as well. <laughs> Tell him the truth. We're an honest. He's, he's a lot nicer away from the cameras. <laughs> <laughs> Who else, who else but the doctor of democracy, me, would place themselves at such risk? Now, finally, uh, our men in Washington also, all were also caught up with Helen Thomas. Now, you may not know who Helen Thomas is. You may not know what she looks like. We have featured her recently in our enhanced audio. Clinton was jogging by and was asked a question about if Panetta is going to be taken to the woodshed or not. And the president said, <laughs> before. And um, Helen Never Thomas. Going down the drain. That's her. That's her. Here, Rick, Rick, play that again. This is Helen Thomas. Every day going down the drain. That's her telling the president about his economic plan. So here she is. We caught up with her at uh, Saturday Night in Washington. Uh, recently, Helen Thomas commented that everything's going down the drain about the Clinton administration. What's your reaction to her quote on that? Uh, there's a slight, uh, there's a slight stoppage in the drain. It hasn't gone all the way down yet. <laughs> it's early. Well, he had a, had a bad week, I think. Uh, maybe things will pick up for him, but it was the Waco and losing the job creation bill. And uh, it just seemed that uh, things were going bad for him. And there she is, ladies and gentlemen, the, uh, the, our, our woman in Washington. That's Helen Thomas. That's the uh, person to put with the voice. We've got the rest of the show coming up right after this break. Stay with us, and we'll be right back. Don't go away. more fun than a human being should be allowed to have. Folks, the stars come out for this show. We'd like to introduce you to a couple people who are in our audience tonight. Maureen O'Boyle from A Current Affair is off to the side here. There she is. And there's, there's her brother. Her brother Tom is right there. Both, um, both, uh, both big fans of the show. Maureen uh, did a great interview with me on A Current Affair and, and saved me from embarrassing myself on a scandal show. Uh, it's a tough thing to do because I've never been involved in scandal, and yet a current affair wanted me. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, it's good to see you here. Come back any time. Now time to our Man on the Street segment on, on the uh, national debt and the deficit. Now, well, the reason we're doing this is uh, I, I thought everybody knew what the difference between the national debt and the deficit was. When we roll this tape, you will see that, that few people that we talk In fact, I'm, I'm not sure. There may be one person that gets it. And uh, it, is, it is crucial here to understand because this is what the, the national conversation is all about, the, the debate over economic and tax policy. So after we roll through this, you'll find out where you stand on this. We've got some numbers to put this all in perspective for you, so take a look. The sum total, you can see it plainly as we shot it in bright daylight, very intelligently. I'd like to know if, if you could tell me what the difference between the federal deficit is and the national debt. Couldn't tell you. <laughs> national debt is, um, you know, what we lend to countries or what have you, or blah, blah, blah. What we owe That's a national debt. Okay, federal deficit is what, you know, the United States or New York would have to deal with or what have you. National debt and federal deficit. National debt encompasses uh, all the money it owes to uh, uh, foreign countries as well as its own. The federal deficit is, is related to the uh, budget, uh, the end of the budget, in the f uh, whatever fiscal year you're talking about. Aren't they the same thing? What is the difference between them? I didn't know there was a difference. <laughs> Um, well, the national debt to me is just nationwide, like the debt that the entire world carries, where the, the deficit is just how much money we're, we owe, or how much money behind we are compared to how much money we don't have. 
What's the difference between the national debt and the federal deficit? Uh, Twelve years of the Republican regime. That's what I feel. The deficit and never, all the screwing up that's been going on. It's been a Republican. A blithering idiot. And, and you know, probably, probably an economist uh, in the Clinton administration up here riding his bike for exercise or something down in Times Square. That's where we went to get that footage. Very simply, my friends, here you go. The national debt is the sum total of all deficits which have been run every year since this nation was founded. The deficit is the amount of money we spend each year that we don't have. It's the amount of money we spend that is greater than the taxes that are collected. You take all of those deficits, which is a yearly thing, don't forget, and add those deficits together and you get the national debt. Now the national debt right now is four trillion dollars. I'm not going to get into a discussion of who we owe it to because that's, that gets very esoteric and leads to a lot of arguments. But uh, I, I want to put this in perspective for you. If we're trying to solve the national debt as a budgetary item, if we're going to try to establish budgetary policy, tax and spend policy, to fix the national debt. Now I have prepared a uh, little chart here for you to look at on the screen. Here's what we'd have to do to eliminate the four trillion dollar national debt. That's four and twelve zeros after it, my good friends. The last time the United States ran a surplus was the budget year of 1969-1970. Interestingly enough, Richard Nixon was president then, and that led us to a recession. And the size of the debt or the surplus was 3.2 billion. That's the last time we collected more money than we spent. Now, if we could run back-to-back $3.2 billion surpluses, we would eliminate the national debt in the year 3035 A.D. or 1,042 years from now. Now, there's no way we're going to run $3.2 billion surpluses every year. And even if we did, a thousand years. Now, let's look at it another. Let's say that we could run budget surpluses of 43 billion that should be uh, uh, 43 billion not not 4.3 let's say we should run four, 43 billion dollar surplus it would take us 100 years of 43 billion dollar surpluses to eliminate the national debt and we're never going to do that that isn't going to happen and what you should also realize is that you cannot pay enough taxes for all that to happen so any talk of raising taxes to get rid of deficits or debts doesn't work it's a spending problem and it's an economic growth problem and when i come back i'll expand on these things a a little bit more and and show you some reaction to the uh, news the economic news of yesterday that was somewhat bad by mr stephanopoulos the picture we showed you of him in the diaper at the beginning of the show. Don't go away. Back with more right after this. Welcome back. Some lady in the audience is going nuts. Cannot believe that I'm single. What, what is it? What, what did you say? You can't believe. <laughs> Tell them what you said. What, what, what it was that you said? I said I was surprised that some woman hasn't come and knocked you down in the night and carried you up to a preacher and married you. <laughs> <laughs> and so am I. I can't believe it hasn't happened. I think I'm one of the best catches in the world, but it hasn't. It ha and you see, you get one woman applauding that. That's I think <laughs> illustrates. Illustrates the problem. All right, now let's. This is what it's like to be me, folks. We just thought we'd clue you in and share it with you. Now I want to give you a little bit of a lesson here. Uh, uh, if you if you'll follow me, this is this is something I'm very passionate about. I want people to be great, as you know. I want people to be prosperous. I want people to be independent. I want rugged individualism and the pursuit of excellence to be something that as many people in this country as possible actually try, because that's where you get happiness. That's where you get contentment. That's where you get prosperity, and that's how you get a great nation. Now, last fall, after the election, the Clinton team was not even inaugurated, and we had a fourth quarter that went through the roof. Remember that gross domestic product in, uh, in December was announced as 4.8%. And there were President Clinton, well, he wasn't inaugurated yet, Clinton and Gore were sitting there taking credit for this. And they weren't in office, none of their policies had been implemented, and they were saying it was due to hope. 
The American people were hoping for change. They were all excited, and I'll grant them, hey, when you have a change in your life and you're excited about it, it can make you go out and do things. And I don't doubt that the Christmas spending that took place was due to a, an in, increase or an uptick in good feeling and euphoria. But if we grant them that, and we do here, then it's also safe to assume, isn't it, that when they are inaugurated and in office and begin saying things for real, and we don't have to sit around and hope and wonder, all we have to do is listen to them. And then they start talking about every day a new tax here, a new tax there. They're going to punish that group of people there for achieving, or that group of people are going to punish the pharmaceuticals industry, they're going to punish doctors, price controls here. Isn't it possible for people to go, oh, wait a minute, how much money am I going to have when these guys get through with me? And then stop spending money, and then we have a plunge in the index of leading economic indicators worse than any time in the last two years. Now, if they can get there out of office and sit there during the last quarter and get everybody's hopes up just because they're going to be president, it's safe to assume that when they are president, when they are doing things, they can be responsible because of what they're really doing for slowing down the economy. And I think that's exactly what's happening. But here's how they feel about it. Here's George Stephanopoulos yesterday from the White House explaining why the index of leading economic indicators plunged last month. Watch this. Clearly, I mean, the, the economic performance in the first quarter uh, is not up to snuff, and I think that what we're facing is a legacy of 12 years of not investing in our people and their futures, uh, 12 years of increasing deficits every single year, and the president's making strides to reverse that. He's looking to invest in our people and to bring the deficit down with real spending cuts and by increasing taxes on the wealthy. Oh, that's going to fix everything. I mean, how, how long are they going to keep singing this song? This is massive fraud and deceit. When they talk about investment, 12 years of not investing in our people, what the hell is that? You know, when a politician says investment, it means him spending your money the way he wants to. <laughs> Consumption is when you spend your money the way you want to, if you have any left, when these people get through. And I think this is disingenuous and it is dishonest for these people to sit here and blame their own economic plunge because of what they want to do and what they're talking about on Ronald Reagan, who hasn't been on the scene in five years, ladies and gentlemen. And you've got to wake up. You cannot let them continue to get away with blaming the most prosperous ten years, or eight, in the post-war period for the calamity they are bringing to this nation economically. Now, one more thing before we go to a break. You've heard about the 50,000 jobs at Pizza Hut. These are permanent part-time jobs. These are jobs which will feature health benefits. These jobs are the exact same kind of jobs that Bill Clinton wanted to produce with his stimulus package, that $16.4 billion stimulus package. In fact, they're better jobs. They're private sector jobs. Clinton's jobs, building alpine slides over in Santa Barbara, or building, building swing sets somewhere, or, or what dead-end part-time jobs with no health benefits. Here's the private sector. Now, Bill Clinton was going to spend $16 billion to create 500,000 jobs. Pizza Hut's just created one-tenth of that 500,000 jobs. You think it cost them one-tenth of $16 billion or $1.6 billion? No. Let the private sector do it, keep government out of it, and everybody's going to be much better off and much happier. Listen to this. Folks. We'll be back with more right after this. Good. Discipline is working. We're going to get to the fourth monitor. There's a public service campaign that just started in Minnesota aimed at getting women to stop smoking. I want to show you, we have a 29-second public service announcement that's designed to get women to stop smoking. I just want you to look at this and see what you think about it. That's a great ad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Women are a major target for cigarette company advertising sell a lot of cigarettes for us because cigarette companies count on making millions of dollars a year on women smokers women will love it oh. maybe it's time women snuffed that idea out for good now I even heard members of this audience laughing let me tell you something about that ad you may think that's an anti-smoking ad that's not an anti-smoking ad 
that is an anti-capitalism ad. That ad is angry because somebody's making money. And that's not the right message to send out here. We shouldn't be against profit. That's a lingering thing from the Clinton administration. That ad is also anti-male. Can you imagine if it was a man putting out his cigarette on a woman's head? What the reaction would be? And why are there two guys? How come the evil people here are two guys, one of them bald-headed, and the woman does that? you got to think about this stuff, folks. That's why I'm valuable to you as host. <laughs> See you on our next show. Services provided and promotional fees paid by the following. Rush Limbaugh's wardrobe by Rochester, big and tall. Set of Rush's TV show for only $24.95. Just call 1 800 FOR Video. For a transcript, send $5 to Burrell's Transcripts, Box 7, Livingston, New Jersey, 07039. Or call 1 800 777 Text.